And it took a long time and a lot of experimentation to figure out when OD will let you have other books. Eventually he'll let you, your lending limit goes up to three for most of the vanilla game. And it took a long time to feel like, is it map completion? Is it monsters killed? It's actually just every time you leave the library and come back, it increments a counter for OD. And after that counter reaches a certain threshold, he's like, oh, you can have a second book now. So just by warping out and coming back twice, he should give us our second book. Hi, OD, I'm back. You're quite and so we're going to put on the Fortune Tome for plus five luck. And then we're going to go do that again. Just warp out twice and come back. And he'll give us a third book. So earlier versions of this same route, I would just... You have to talk to OD as part of the plot later. That's when I would pick up my second book. And then much later in the game... There's a boss I have to fight, an optional boss, but I have to fight him for a drop that I need. Uh, and it's a relatively tough boss, and that's when I would pick up my third book. But I sat down, like, what's the actual science here? Like, what actually determines when OD will give me a third book? It really is just this easy. So we get third book from our first meeting with OD. I'm also glowing red. That's weird. That just means that our book friend has given us the strength buck. And we want uh, oh. Prowess Tome. So there, Might, Fortune, and Prowess. Use. So that is Attack Power, Luck, and Attack Speed. Also on the map, you see a green dot floating around over there. That is the uh, my three-hour, six-minute speed run. It shows me where on the map. Like That run is just fight has just finished fighting the boss in the next room. So we are one boss fight behind that green dot. Eventually that green dot will vanish. It's going on up there now. Farewell, green dot. We might see you again later. We'll see. So here's Andrealphus. I don't have to worry about Andrealphus that much. Just because... We have so much attack power with the level 2 blue skies. And the extra attack power from the books that we got and the book familiar so really we have four books helping us out book friends for days theoretically you want to stay behind him and have him because he takes a long time to turn around he tries to turn and face you before he attacks and his turning around animation takes a very long time and you can uh, make use of that by getting behind him and putting in a lot of kicks during his turn around animation or you could just roll up in here with way too much attack power. Either way, you know, however you want to do it. Uh, I think this is going to be better for us for now. Traverser Ring is extra attack power based on map completion. But I'm not really into that. I'm going to take two points of attack power from this hat, though. Early versions of the route, I completed as much of the map as possible. But uh, obviously that takes a lot longer and... There is a better accessory that we're going to equip later, so the Traverser Ring kind of got depreciated. We can double jump now, and double jumping is super good. Uh, we need to go this way. Not only because we can reach more areas, but after you double jump, if you hold down and push jump, you get the dropkick attack. Which you can chain together... And that's why Double Jump is the best attack option in the game for us. For the whole game. It's very rare that I won't be using these drop kicks in boss fights. Either as my main method of dealing damage or as a positioning tool. There's a high learning curve to them. You can't just throw them out. The problem is, you're holding down and you're spamming the, the, the Double Jump button. Because you push the button once, you get a drop kick. You push the button again, you get a Double Jump and you have to alternate those. So you really do spam the button, but the problem is if you're holding down and spamming the button... Uh, I think this wall over here is breakable in a second. No, it's a little later maybe. I don't know, we'll see. But I want this gadget band. I didn't 
have that hat on very long, I guess. Probably not worth equipping that. But most enemies in the game, you can just dance on their heads, and is a very efficient way of killing them. But if you're holding down and spamming the button, what'll happen is if you miss one of your drop kicks, you'll land on the ground, and down plus attack on the ground is this sweep kick, which leaves you vulnerable afterwards. And sometimes you can get into an enemy's hitbox like that. Oh, the jump kicks are just too good. Also, you can jump kick off of lanterns to get extra height. I think these two boxes are pointless because one's a recipe and the other is an extra hairstyle. The problem with these is we can't sell them. And your jump kick has to be super precise. So the smaller an enemy is, like the, the lower their like footprint is, Like these poison toads on the ground, the higher your odds of not hitting them when you try to drop kick onto them. And if you don't hit, actually, I want to go up first. There's a box I need. Blue box has treasure. Definitely want it. If you land next to an enemy from any amount of height, Miriam has a landing animation, like that, and that is. A really good way to take a lot of damage in boss fights is to land next to the boss instead of hitting them and leaving yourself wide open to attack. So as a result of that, the hardest bosses in the game from this point tend to be the human ones. Just because they have the lowest footprint. Like this this werewolf, it's trivially easy to land a dropkick on him because he's wide. You get a boss that's dummy thick like that, real easy to land on them over and over again, and there's they really have no answer for it. Also, you can't alter the angle of your drop kick. It's always this same angle. Which, again, can be problematic. Where do I need to go from here? I want to go this way first. I might end up backtracking a little bit through this area, because I don't remember which order I want to grab these boxes in, but there are boxes you need to get. Now I can make candy. Like, I'm not gonna, but I could if I want. Uh, there's a gun over here that's good for selling. Oh, I am going to have to backtrack. I was supposed to do this second. No worries. Uh, actually, let's just go down and... There's an HP up down here that I want to get. I killed all those poison toads below because it's really easy to drop between those gears if I'm not aiming my jumps properly. And if you do that, you land down on, like, poison toad central down there. And sometimes, like that werewolf, if they get into tight quarters, it's just a matter of, like, I'll take one hit and then use the iframes in your hitbox to bring the rest of your HP pool to justice. Ah, see? <laughs> right there. If, there were, if I had left those poison frogs alive, I'd be in a world of hurt right now. Drop kicking like this is also a way to speed yourself up. It's faster than walking. Uh, I think backdash canceling is the fastest way to move before you get the drop kick. But just from the name backdash canceling, you can kind of tell that it's not something that I want to do everywhere through the whole game. No, thank you. This insect is causing me a little trepidation trying to get away from it. Alright, can I get this gun on my first try without dropping these platforms? I got an insect behind me. I don't know how much of a problem he's going to be. I... Mm. Mm. <laughs> he's never ever going to let me kill him. He's just going to be there for all the rest of time. But I do need this gun to sell. Oh my goodness. This is where being a 3D game really hurts Bloodstained. I think the graphics are mostly okay. Uh, it is kind of an ugly game to look at in some places. There's one level coming up here in a, in a few stages that I think is the worst looking level in the game. By far. I think a lot of the game 
First of all, I just don't think 3D graphics are very nice in games of this nature, platform games. It's harder to read the screen when you're dealing with 3D graphics. Especially in, like, this level here, where you've got, like, rotating platforms and stuff to worry about. There we go. There's the gun we're looking for. Uh, and reading the screen is something that's really useful. You have to be able to know... Where is this wall? Is this it here? Maybe it's up here. There it is. I knew there was an MP up on this screen. So we're going to step in here real quick. This is our teleporter for the area. But if you can't read the screen in a platform game, like, knowing wh exactly where the edges of platforms are, it's really easy to botch jumps. And that rotating area is terrible for that. You're also zoomed way out in that area. The camera is pulled way back to show you more of the open screen. Which makes it even harder to discern which pixels you can stand on and which pixels you can't. I also just think the character design in the game isn't great. I think the characters are kind of over-designed. Miriam especially. But... Graphics aren't everything. The, uh... I actually went back and forth on those paintings. They drop a, sh a shard called Welcome Party. Which is one of the best shards in the game. It's a red attack shard, and it puts these, like, orbiting books around you that all do damage when they hit. And I went back and forth on whether to allow that in Super Kicks. I decided against it. I'm like, you know what? Just no red shards ever. Except for the two exceptions that are required for story progression. One of which we've seen. And I think this is our new armor. Sure is. Big defense boosts. So wait till you see what a joke this boss is. If you're using super kicks. Now, the drop kick that deals damage. It always deals damage and you can always drop kick. No matter what you have equipped. Sword, uh, spear, whip, doesn't matter. However, a drop kick will do one point of damage in those cases. Maybe not literally one. But very, very little. It's, it's a utility move. It's not meant to be an attack. If you're equipping shoes, it does half of your attack power. I think it's half of your attack power. However, the Blue Skies specifically lets you do your full attack power on every drop kick. And that allows you to do stuff like this and make this boss into just a complete joke. There is, this fight is semi-scripted. They're scripted to stop at three places along the wall. That's the first. They'll move down a couple more blocks here and then stop again. He's probably out of HP at this point, but he's scripted to always perform this move. And then, like, yeah, they're probably at zero HP right now, but... They can't actually die until they reach a particular point on the level. And then once they get to that point, you hit them one more time and it forces them into their next phase. So that's it. Goodbye. One of the best attack shards in the game, actually, is the one you get from this boss. The Inferno Breath move that you get is really, really good. We can't use it, and we will never use it. And, like, we killed the boss in such a weird way that it didn't even know to do the boss music. It's still playing. Here's the next item we need to get. The silver bromide. And this will let us get into the next area of the game. But first... If you didn't blink and you actually looked at the names of the monsters... You'll notice that we have a couple more monsters that we can turn in. And I think we can get our next batch now. Maybe we can't just yet. I'll try in any event. 
Oh, so we still need two more of those guys. There are more of those guys later, so... Actually, we're gonna kill that... ...individual guy a couple more times as we go forward. Let's say hi to Harold. It's been a minute since we've seen Henry. Good old Harry Henry DeZambo... ...S. Preston Esquire... ...Jingleheimer Schmidt. What a bro. Yeah, we can turn in this. And yeah, we get our next batch now. Is that it? That's all we got? Yeah, okay. Now we need the silver bromide to come down here to the shop. And get our picture taken. By Dominique. Just because Miriam's beautiful and vain and wants a picture of herself at all times. But now that we have the picture, we'll go back and talk to OD again. And this is where I used to pick up the second of OD's books. So there is a little something about OD that I don't completely understand, because this is only leaving the library and coming back once in a typical run, and the second book will be ready. Whereas if you warp back and do the warp trick, like I did, you do have to warp back and forth twice. I'm not really sure why, but whatever, we get all three books early, it's fine. Here you are. Thank you very much, OD. Now we've got a pass plate, which means we can continue on to the next area of the game. So back to the Tower of Twin Dragons. Yeah, we're gonna kill this shield outsider. We can just do this to him. Yeah, that Welcome Company shard. Awesome, awesome shard. If you're playing vanilla and you don't really know how the game works, you can kind of turn that on and face tank every boss in the game. It's what I did the first time I played the game. But I decided to disallow it from Super Kicks. You kind of do have to design your character to be either strength or intelligence based. And it is kind of a trade-off because the equipment that gives you good strength, which is good attack power, is going to lower your intelligence and vice versa. There's not a good, there's not like a best option. It really does have to deal with like what playstyle you're aiming for. I have to kill these fairies every time because they laugh at you. There's a familiar we're not going to use. And I just cannot abide being laughed at. And their death squeal is so satisfying. This guy here. Whoops, let's actually kill him. <laughs> Has a, I think, 5 or maybe 4% drop. And if you get two of them, it's a type of beef that you can make into steak, which is the first of the two strength uh, raising foods that I had put in the route. But farming two of them off that at this stage in the game... takes a very long time. I'm not moving very well around that bunny girl. Hmm. Now, if you missed it, I just killed a weird dog head. That dog head, and we'll see more in the level coming up probably in the next video here, I swear looks exactly like my dog Edgar. The first time I played this game, I, I think I pooped myself a little bit. I walked in this hallway, and here Edgar's head just started out of nowhere. Uh, trying to eat me. Like, wow, what did I do to you? The actual story behind that is... This game was funded on Kickstarter. And one of the Kickstarter tiers was, Oh, we'll put your pet in the game as an enemy. So somebody out there has a dog that looks like my dog Edgar. And paid $500 or whatever to be an enemy in the game. The big cat demons that you see are also somebody's pet. Uh, the paintings that you see in the background are also similar kinds of donors. I really liked this level, actually, how you're kind of going through you and Zangetsu, uh, working together to clear all the monsters out. Zangetsu's way stronger than we are. <laughs> you can see he's, he's hitting for two, 300 damage. 
I think I missed a treasure box back there, actually. They had some money in it. Oh well. Get this open. I got it open. Chill out, dog. So I'll go up here and grab this treasure. These assassins can drop some useful equipment for us, if they so decide to. Another really good sword, that Honobami sword. Really good. This uh, stage made me especially happy because it's basically the first level from Curse of the Moon. Where you get to the end and you fight the glutton train. Uh, unfortunately, you really can't do uh, do drop kicks against glutton trains. You gotta get down here and kick him in the tongue. Are we not attacking? Okay. I thought we were attacking, but I guess we're not. That was actually very helpful of him. He knocked me back into the position where his machine gun couldn't damage me. Kind of a gimmick boss more than anything else. There's really nothing that boss can do to be difficult. I wish Zangetsu would get in there and do more of the work. Honestly. But Zangetsu's kind of a jabroni. Alright, so we don't worry more anymore about the Bridge of Evil. The idea is these little gates won't let you through without proper identification. So Miriam needs the identification. And for identification, she needs to get her picture taken. And to get her picture taken, she's got to go down to the DMV. And it's a big hassle. And I'll see you guys next episode. Thanks for watching. Shoutouts to April Polomsky for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video and you want to see more, please tickle my thumb, leave a friendly comment, and ring my little bell.